Lake to Manly. Just about to leave. Uh, printed out my uh, permit. I'm outside of the plant. That's the John Deere plant. And before I loaded, I mo actually I came to the plant like this because of that big excavator I had before. So I did not move my fifth wheel. And before loading, I thought, hey, this thing is light, right? So I moved it. So my fifth wheel was over here. And now I start driving. I see it's too much. It's like over 46,000. Uh, I see on the gauge. So I moved it back. Because you know, it's fine in Canada, but in the States, you can get a ticket for that. And I look at my permit. The permit says seven axles. So I moved it like that. So now I'm going to use my uh, uh, pusher. And this thing here, again, is just like that cat. For some reason on the front, on the front, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't connect the chains. I don't know what's wrong with me. Like on the back, they worked, but over here, they didn't. But the cool thing is that, unlike the cat, you see this thing has reinforced uh, pieces over there. And they're marked for load securement okay they reinforced like this one is just piece of steel but over there there's another piece of steel in the back and so that's what i did i did two chains like crossing them right like this. in the front two chains and in the back and then here i did this never did it like this before but you know i i i couldn't be more creative than that for some reason over here it worked see the hook grabbed it maybe it's a bigger hook i don't know well, they look the same to me but so my flex, so here I had to combine two chains because I, I, I ran out of long chains. So same shit here. And they give you a hole on the frame, but look at how thick, how thick this part is, right? My, my clamps, they don't have the space. So basically you have to disconnect your hook from your chain, put the chain through and reconnect the hook. Who wanna do that? And the, the, the funniest part is that this thing has such a long boom. It's very low, you know? I, I'm like two feet below, uh, below uh, legal. But we had to load it like this. So now I, I look like a, like a funny guy, you know? And then he put it like this and we tried different positions. You know, at, at first he put it over here. It was like one foot of the ground. I said, no, that's too much. Like this way, it's 23 inches only. I measured everything. And this thing, I was, you know, nothing is stopping. It was not moving, but I thought, wait a second. Now. Nothing is stopping this from moving, right? It took me like half an hour to figure out a way to secure these. So now they're... So now they're... Uh, tied to each other so all the axles are down and put a strap in there to hold this thing and it's not supposed to be too heavy <laughs> look what happened with my boards yeah we use the boards because it is wide uh, I forgot what it is hundred like 11 feet something but you see I don't like this when the middle is off the trailer so it's really much safer like this a good machine uh, I think it weighs about uh, they said 68,000 and it doesn't look that heavy and I know they're not they're not supposed to be heavy because they only designed to lift a bunch of trees from the ground right they don't need a big counterweight and over here they give you two tie downs one on each side of this weird box but again they put a reinforced piece in there it's too thick for a regular uh, like clamp like even the biggest one i have but the good thing one more good thing about this machine is i i grabbed my bar at uh, my carpet sorry bucket carpet and went to look for uh for the exhaust pipe <laughs> and it's on the side so forget that i'm not covering that like how do you cover that right so because this is designed you know for uh, it's a forestry machine it is it designed to work in basically inhumane conditions right 
so everything is covered everything is protected so unless they want the you know see there's not like even there's not enough lip in there to put anything in there so the only way to do that is to put something from inside like some kind of like a balloon you know that will i don't know so okay the bolts there should be some cover right there should be some cover from the plant hooked up to those bolts but oh but the funny thing happened i went to the to the other entrance where i usually load and they were looking for this machine for half an hour they couldn't find it then they said go to the north entrance so i had to go back came to the that's the plant over there i was on the other side it's a huge huge plant so i came this way and they found this machine by my serial number and the guy loaded me you know no big damage you saw i'll check the camera but the camera was on the back of the truck i think it should be uh, should capture something um i wanted to say something smart you know and fun okay i got it so <laughs> a bunch of these when i went in there like on the south entrance right there were a bunch of these machines and you see how they have these uh, signs on the boom right like this one has them for some reason in french ne pas chez proveo ne monnaie 300 right you see everything is in french hold on let's see do they put anything in english here basically stay back 300 meters no 300 feet yeah you see everything is in french Nepa, basically do not approach i can understand this Nepa approche are uh, basically do not stay the fuck away when the machine is in in uh, sorry about my french but <laughs> but anyway what was what was funny is that i went there there's a bunch of machines there and i couldn't believe my eyes because the signs were in a russian i'm like what is this ukraine and you see it says Asterosna, не приближаться, basically caution, do not approach, stay back, just like over here it says 300 feet, 90 meters, but in Russian, in Cyrillic, you know, like, like beautiful, all the same signs, but like, I couldn't believe my eyes, and then actually I was, I asked this guy, I said, I said, what is this? And he said, you're Cyrillic, he said Cyrillic, oh, okay, yeah, Cyrillic, and so I, evidently they, uh, they export something to Russia from here but that's not me so my my machine is uh, only French even though it goes to Ontario I don't know why French if it was going to Quebec that would be understandable but anyway I think it's just to confuse the DOT you know when they stop you here at the scale all right did they yeah i see okay i moved my i moved my see like now i know that's 40 that's 40 000 pounds because when it's at 60 that's 34. no wait a second this is 46. yeah the this is 80 psi that's 46 i know that so that's too much that's okay for canada so we're gonna do this we're gonna push the secret button pull the secret button and look what happens now with this the pressure start rising over here 50 you see the pressure is rising on the pusher axle and it takes the weight of the drives and of the steer so if it hits 60 that means i'm legal on my drives oh, i'm 34 and that's the point but because i'm not too heavy i think i'm gonna keep it probably around uh, around around 40 somewhere here but that's how I usually 60 if I really heavy 60 over here means 20,000 pounds so if I'm really heavy I keep it at 60 with a big excavator John Deere 450 I had to keep it at like 70 because I was watching my gauge over here and you see now it's almost legal yeah pretty much legal so that's what it should be so 40 psi here and then I'm fine and it'll probably even keep going so maybe I can even yeah do like this 30 well we'll see what it does okay so let's start driving i'll show you guys just how i get out on the main road here uh, hold on <laughs> i 
and what's happening is we have to get to 52 but thankfully they're not yeah it's getting too hot I'm gonna switch on my uh, air conditioning so that's my next stop so I'm taking I'm going around the book to 20 and then 20 west pretty much all the way to to uh, 35 see over here and that's my I think final stop for the day will be that one because that's 255 kilometers two and a half hours minimum and there's a flying J there so they're sending me west basically because later I'll be going north towards Minneapolis and towards Canada Canada is over here And if somebody is curious again, this is not a GPS. This is um, LG tablet. Actually, now I, I gotta switch it to uh, detailed view because I'm a bit confused here which way I'm turning. I think I'm turning back there. All right. Oh, one more thing I forgot to do is, which is not good. This is the lights. I forgot to turn on my lights on the trailer. And then there's, I'll be passing a small town. Oh, and I moved the uh, tires yesterday. They only charged me 40 bucks. Sap Brothers, you're the best. They took these uh, wheels that were here, moved them in here. See this tire that I ran flat. Now it's developing this bad thing so it was getting too much uh, load in there because first axle was out much more quicker right so now i put them in here because i often run with these with this axle up up in the air all right where's my secret switch here we go that's better and i have a cool flag nice touch you know all right you stay put okay do not move i repeat i'm not gonna say that again if you move you're grounded what's happening with my phone over there charging yeah i got my permit so the the main goal is to reach uh, yeah I'm all dirty I gotta stop somewhere wash my hands J at I-35 has the scale, has a scale. Oh, it's half after three. I think the factory guys already leave.
at first I almost went in there and then I see a sign the sign says uh, no trucks and some other guy from coming from the opposite direction is waving me back back go go basically from where I'm coming so, okay oh and this uh, another thing I wanted to mention is that I yesterday when they were doing the the tire rotation at the Sab Brothers one mechanic was talking to the clerk over there about the fuel filters and so I asked him about this about the double seal like one guy left a comment thanks again about the possibility that a double seal on a fuel filter canister as he put it can cause uh, air leak and loss of prime so I asked this guy and I said you ever ran into something like that he says no but he says one of our customers uh, runs a fleet of um, runs a fleet of Mack trucks and he says whenever he brings them over here And leaves them overnight he says when we uh, try to start them in the morning they all lose prime and we have to you know use the manual pump I said really he says yep according to my uh, LG I'm turning in half a mile on US 20 West it's gonna be a right hand turn so many lights on this uh, Iowa 32. stay on this 20 till I reach I-35 next to me next to me the guy is loading a tractor on a tiny trailer with two axles single wheels pulling pulled by a pickup truck and the guy turned around you see because his rear wheels are so big it just crawled right in and this is my first stop it's called Manchester Manchester Iowa it's a small BP here a small truck stop diesel is 254 a gallon not bad I went inside and get some coffee and, uh, they don't have any normal food, so I just got some protein bars again. Don't want to eat bread. And all this breaded chicken. Oh, so what I wanted to say is that I checked my... Uh, so first stop, right? Within 50 miles or one hour. So I checked the uh, chains. All chains were fine. But the, in the back, of course, who I was kidding. You know, all that boom sitting on the... On the timber and I put one 3,000 pound uh, strap on it and a big strap over the top so I stop I go in there the, the wood moves the big strap is slightly loose the small strap is slightly loose and it took me a while there so finally I uh, tighten all the straps and I put a chain hook up hooked up a clamp to you know where my flip axle goes there's a hole in there 
I put a clamp in there and hook up a chain and of course it was too short I go back and grab another clamp make kind of like an extension two clamps on one side then start playing with the with the binder first binder does not work I go grab the second one the second one one position does not work I have to move and I'm sitting there on the dirty tarps and it's extremely hot weather so it was not easy but I think I, I managed it so now the the wood is still kind of loose loose right but first of all there's a strap there's a strap the original strap like the small one that one is tight now and and now there's a chain wrapped around this big block eight inch block and it's pulling it backwards so it's pulling it backwards the boom is pushing down right because the guy applied hydraulics and plus there's a strap so now we should be good and it was tricky to you know how do you keep the chain a little bit higher right otherwise the chain will just go between the block and uh, and the big timber in there the oak so i use some uh I had some edge protectors and I use this big thick uh, piece I use uh, kind of like a fabric right and that helped to keep the the chain up a little bit so now it cannot go down because it's too tense I would show you but it's too hot too hot in there gotta get moving I still have uh, 178 kilometers or what is this 110 miles to go to the flying J 